like for you to meet our custodian, Rosa Correas. She's been with us for two years and works here every day, every, excuse me, every week, two times a week. She's a wonderful person. We're grateful for the kinds of things that she does to keep our church in tip-top shape. Take a look and listen to what we have to say to one another in this video. Hello, everybody. I want to introduce you to a very special person. This is Rosa. She is one of our custodians, and she works at Deer Park. And we are so grateful for you, Rosa. Tell, tell me about how long have you worked here? I Two years. Two years. It doesn't seem that long, but we're so grateful for you. You work so hard. Do you have a family? Can you tell us about your family? Yeah, I got my, my husband, Elmer Faria. I had three, four... Uh, three boys and one girl. Three boys and one girl. Mm -hmm. Are they teenagers or children? How old are they? Are they young? Uh, young yeah, young. they're young. I thought so. Yeah. Well, we are so grateful, Rosa, for the good work you do. You work so hard, and we're so thankful as a church family. Most of our people have not met you. So I just wanted them to meet you with the camera so they can at least see who you are. So I have one more question, Rosa. Who is your favorite person to work with at the church? Me. Mary? <laughs> well, Mary. Yay. We understand. That's good. Thank you, Mary, and thank you, Rosa. Thank you. Wonderful to work together. Thank you. Thank God bless you. One of the things I love to do as I read and study is to take a personal notebook and write down particular quotes that speak to me. I want to share just three of them with you today. They're all brief, but they're ways for us to have a moment of reflection together. The first is by the South African Bishop Desmond Tutu. He says, my humanity is bound up in yours, for we can only be human together. The other is by E.B. White, who wrote the book Charlotte's Web that many of us have read as children or two children. E.B. White says, human beings must always be on the watch for the coming of wonders. Isn't that true? And finally, the poet May Sarton says this, it always comes back to the same necessity. Go deep enough and there's a bedrock of truth, however hard. Those kinds of things that speak to my mind and my heart and I hope they're helpful to you today. I want to mention a few things that you'll find in this week's newsletter that's either found online, if you have a way to do that, or it's sent to you in the mail. First of all, we're going to have the Lord's Supper together again this Sunday. No, we won't meet in the sanctuary, but on video, you'll be able to experience a time of communion. I'll ask you now that you'll consider having a piece of bread or cracker and some juice ready for when you uh, watch that particular service for Sunday. Also, this week, we're asking each of you to consider having a picture taken uh, of yourself wearing a mask. We'd like to do one of those slideshows again, showing each of our faces on it with a mask on so we can be able to see each other at least that way. So if you can do that, send a, a picture of yourself uh, to the church office no later than this next Monday, May the 4th. Also, we as you know in the newsletter, we produce a prayer list every week. You can help us update that list by calling the church office when there's changes or additions to make to the list. Also, every summer around this time, we collect uh, school supplies for the Highland Community Ministries work that we have supported for many decades. Usually we ask you to bring pencils and paper and crayons and so forth to the church and then we take it over there. We can't do it that way this year. Instead, they're asking us if we'd like to make a donation to get gift cards to either Walmart, Kroger, or Target. If you can provide those and either send them to the HCM office or bring them to Deer Park, we'll get them to them. Their particular address is Highland Community Ministries, 1228 East Breckenridge Street, Louisville, 40205. Please consider doing that and we'll be very grateful. Finally, uh, in the newsletter, there's a mention that this coming Monday night will be, or Monday morning rather, will be a deacon's meeting at 11 o'clock. They have not been able to meet for a long time, and I pray that you'll be able to consider uh, praying for them as they gather for the first time this Monday. I want to read a passage of scripture from the 130th Psalm. It's a beautiful passage, and then we'll consider some thoughts about it. 
Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Lord, let your ears be attentive to me, to the voice of my supplications. If you should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that we may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for his word. In your word, O God, I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, as a watchman waits for the morning, even as a watchman waits for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love. With him there is great power to redeem. It is he who redeems Israel from all their iniquities. Psalm 130 is one of the most beloved passages of Scripture. The Latin translation opens with the words de profundis, which means out of the depths. The ancient Israelites, however, were not a sea-going people. The sea was generally a frightening place for them. Psalm 130 opens in that terrible place, out of the depths, I cry to you, O Lord. The image is used to describe the lonely feelings that sometimes come with sorrow or with pain. For those who go through such mourning or difficulty, such experiences can feel like you're trapped at the bottom of the ocean. When we're in over our heads, when we're in the midst of suffering, that's when we can often find ourselves shouting out for God's help and comfort. But I wonder if the depths can also be a place of learning. Could the depths become a sacred place for us? Perhaps sorrow, as painful as it is, and as much as we hate to experience it, can be a portal through which we experience God's love, mercy, and his forgiveness. For the author in today's ancient text, I think the depths became such a portal for him. The author writes, O Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him, great power to redeem. So, if we listen to the psalmist, even being in the depths can lead us right to God's hope, his forgiveness, his mercy, and his redemption. When we're hurting, faith can be a powerful source of strength. It can be a source of helping us to cope whatever we may be facing. Just as the power in our bodies could propel us through the water like when we're swimming and enable us to get to safety so our faith can enable us to move out out of the depths and toward hope, mercy, and forgiveness. So, when you're in over your head, where do you turn for help? As the poet once said, the sea is so wide and my boat is so small, so be with me, Lord. Be with me in the depths, I pray. There's a beautiful prayer that was written by a friend of mine, Charlanda Sledge. It's called Silence. Let this be our prayer today. Oh God, it feels rude to break the silence, short as it was. We had hardly begun to be quiet, and now we're back into words. In our search for you, we confess that we reflect too much, analyze too much, talk too much, figuring out, thinking aloud. God, give us more silent space so we can discover the world beyond our making. Be the word that comes to dwell in the silence, authoring sentences of calm, paragraphs of comfort. And help us always remember that in silence we can know indeed that you are God, even in the depths. We pray this prayer. In the name of Jesus, amen.